Welcome back, everybody. I hope you are all doing well. I am in a really good mood today because my office smells amazing because I have been spritzing some samples from a house called Teo Cabanel. And I have been dying to try this house for about three years now. They have been hyped, or they did go through a, a slight period of hype on Instagram in relation to their fragrance Cafe Cabanel, which I do have here. And I hope you can't hear that music. Matt is listening to some Spanish guitar and they're doing a bit of wailing. And it's really cool music that I don't want to get a copyright strike, so I'm hoping that you can't hear that. Anyway, we'll see if I can edit it out. If not, then I guess I'm just going to have to wear it. Anyway, so where was I? I was saying that, yeah, so I wasn't aware that they shipped to Australia, but it turns out that they do, which means that a couple of very generous people in Fragcom in Australia very kindly shared some samples from the house with me. Suffice to say, I really, I'm loving these fragrances. So I've had these samples for a little while. My friend Chrissy first sent me some samples months ago. Thank you so much, Chrissy. And the Carolina Herrero one will be coming soon, I promise. And then I ordered a fragrance from one of the fragrance groups on Facebook and that person also threw in some Teo Cabanel samples without me even asking. So that was very generous. And I am really loving these fragrances. So much so that I did buy one, <laughs> but I'll get to that. But first of all, I'll, I'll just give you a bit of a history of the house because I struggled to really, uh, I read the website and I didn't bother sort of emailing the house because I'm sure it's been, it's Christmas time so, or holiday time, so they're probably really busy and I didn't want to bother them with, you know, questions so that I could do an, a YouTube video. So I read the website, which was quite informative, but the problem I had with the website was really hard to sort of piece together the story of the house. Like there's a lot of information from when the most current uh, owner of the house took over, but there wasn't really, it's you sort of had to go to different places on the website to piece together the information. And then I found an article by the Fragrance Review blog, Now Smell This, which is a really popular long-standing perfume review blog and if you haven't read them or haven't found them before then I'll link uh, the article that that talks about this uh, below because if they're a fantastic website they're a fantastic reference and um, I very much appreciate that they wrote this one review of one fragrance from the house and in that review they provided a history of the house which made it a lot clearer to me what the timeline was and 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 how the current owner came to be the current owner so the house was founded in 1893 by Theodore Cabanel, hence the name Theo Cabanel for the house. And um, he basically you know, ran that for his lifetime. It was very popular. Um, the Duchess of Windsor apparently used to buy their fragrances. And when he passed away, his daughter took over and she ran the house and continued on the perfume making for, uh, for her lifetime. Um, but when she passed away, it was bequeathed to her goddaughter and then I think the house kind of died a bit for a while until her goddaughter's daughter turned 22 and decided to revive the house. That's the history of the house in terms of the timeline. Um, Caroline Ilacqua is the current owner of the house. She's put up a manifesto on the website which talks in quite a bit of detail around the the values of the house, the drivers for um, creating these fragrances, and basically the print the manifesto that she has um, outlines a number of things. But one is that they wanted good quality perfumes that weren't overpriced. Um, which used really good quality raw ingredients in an ethical way. They claim that their supply chain is fully traceable um, and ethical. They employ locally so as to you know, minimize their carbon footprint wherever they can. 
um, and they try to use as much more raw ingredients as possible in their fragrances. They're not 100% um, natural ingredients because they do use a lot of uh, animalic or animal-based ingredients. So those elements in their fragrances are synthetic, um, but yeah, they, they try and source raw ingredients wherever they can. So the first one I want to talk about is Sabum. I'm assuming that's how you say it. And this is, to me, is a really beautiful, slightly sweet, um, primarily lily fragrance. It is a floral fragrance. Um, there are other florals in here. I think there's jasmine and maybe rose. But the floral that I get the most for sure is the lily, that beautiful, clean, watery type of floral. I was surprised to discover that this has Immortelle in it because I'm not really a huge fan of Immortelle. I feel like I can kind of detect it on the paper. I haven't tried wearing it on my skin yet, um, but I think I do detect it on the paper, but it's very clean. It's a beautiful fragrance, actually. I really quite like this one. I think maybe the only thing that I'm wary of with this one, strangely enough, is not the Immortelle, it's the vanilla, because the vanilla is definitely very noticeable on the paper but I feel like if I was to put it on my skin I might end up with lots and lots and lots of vanilla not that that would be necessarily be a bad thing but I feel like I might lose that lily and in fact while I'm sniffing it and as it's drying down on this paper now I feel like you know that beautiful watery fresh lily is sort of already starting to slide into the background so but it is a fantastic fragrance and I really enjoy this one. I, I do want to wear it on skin, but I just haven't had time yet and I really wanted to do this video and talk about this house. So I'm just too impatient, obviously, um, but I will try and follow up with a, maybe a bit more of a review of um, once I put it on skin later on. So that is Sabum. The next one that I have here is one that everyone's probably already familiar with and that is Cafe Cabanel. So this is the one that kind of brought this house to my attention because this particular fragrance got a lot of hype on Instagram a couple of years ago. And interestingly, whilst I was interested in the house, I wasn't overly interested in this particular fragrance because it's a coffee fragrance, or it's meant to be a coffee fragrance, and I don't actually really like coffee fragrances that much. I think I'm a bit of an odd one out in that regard. But I would rather drink my coffee than smell like coffee. So I wasn't actually interested in this house for this particular fragrance. But obviously it's one of their more popular ones, so I was very keen to try it and have a smell. So I was quite surprised when I smelled this on the strip that it doesn't actually it does smell I do get a coffee note and I think there's been a lot of complaints from people who don't like this fragrance or people who were disappointed with this fragrance saying that they didn't feel like they got the coffee I do feel like I get the coffee but this doesn't smell gourmand like I thought it would so it actually smells more dry uh, a little bit bitter very ambery, so it's that really beautiful, dry, dusty, ambery kind of fragrance. And I feel like I get a lot of spice in here. And, and there is that hint of coffee, but it's not, it's not like a cafe latte. It's not a creamy coffee. It's, it's a, a bitter, you know, ground coffee kind of note, which I think I prefer, in fact, so this was a surprise for me, a really pleasant one, because I assumed I wasn't going to like it. And actually, I actually really do like it. But I have so many ambery fragrances that fit this kind of genre in my collection already that I don't feel like I need to rush out and buy it or anything. <clears throat> but this is right up my alley. I love this fragrance and I, I you know, I could, I could really see myself wearing this in the winter time. But anyway, I just, I thought that was interesting. So the next one was a bit of a surprise for me. This is Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. 
Look at me trying to do my French pronunciations. This one was a surprise. So, well, I didn't actually know what was in this fragrance. I hadn't even had any, it hadn't even been on my radar at all. So I had no idea what kind of fragrance it was. But when I first smelled this one, this to me opens more like a gourmand than any of the other fragrances that I've tried from this house so far. So this has a rice note in the opening and that rice note in the opening really gives it this gourmand feel. It's um, a lot of people, I think I've talked about rice notes before in another video a long, long time ago and somebody corrected because I said it makes it smell sweet and somebody corrected me and said no, it makes it smell dry. And I agree that rice notes do impart this sort of dryness to and sort of like dry powderiness to a fragrance. But it also does have a sweetness to it. And when I'm cooking rice, I get a sweetness from it as well. So that's what this fragrance has, but it's almost like it's a little bit sweeter in the opening than, you know, just the rice note. But the, I think the only note listed for the opening is rice on the official sort of note listing. But it also has things like matcha tea and mate and violet and then in the base there's you know these sort of woody elements like sandalwood and guyac wood there's also tolu balsam in the in the base as well this is a a beautiful fragrance and i hadn't really tried this before i ordered the bottle of the other one that i ordered and i wish i'd known about this at the same time because i may have ordered it at the same time it's just such an interesting fragrance. And when I put it on my skin, I have worn it on skin, and I do get that real blast of rice in the opening. Um, but the tea notes aren't like your normal tea. You know, it's a little bit green, but it doesn't have that astringency that a lot of other tea notes or tea fragrances have. Um, it's quite powdery all the way through. And then it just becomes this beautiful, woody, ricey fragrance in the dry down, which I really, really enjoy. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure I would have picked up on the tolu balsam if, some, if I hadn't read that there was tolu balsam in it. But maybe it's just part of that, it, maybe it sort of becomes part of that fluffy, sort of dry, powdery dry down. Uh, in any case, I think, I think this is a fantastic fragrance. It's really unique. I don't think I've smelled anything like this and it lasts really, really well. So that is Je ne sais quoi. The next one I don't have the official sample of, but this was one that was gifted to me. And this is called Rendezvous. And I don't know why I always insist on showing you a picture of these sample vials. Okay, so this one is a floral fragrance. Um, it's got a lot of mimosa in it. And it just, it is so opulent and it's big. I haven't done a full wear of this yet because I just feel like I need to wear it on a day when I think I'm going to be out somewhere or moving around because I just feel like this would be the perfect one to, to just announce my presence <laughs> because even on this strip, like even if I hold the strip here, I can smell it quite clearly and it's been spritzed on here for a while now. So, so it's a mimosa fragrance. I think there's also jasmine and rose. There's violet and white musk. So you're kind of getting that picture. It doesn't smell anything like, say, um, Champs-Élysées by Guerlain, which is another mimosa fragrance that I love. This, but there is an air of similarity or familiarity, I should say, of this fragrance with something that I've smelled before. And I think it's just that mimosa. And I can't, I don't actually have that many mimosa fragrances in my collection. So I'm, I'm trying to think of 
what it might have been. I definitely feel like I've smelled something similar to this, not exactly the same, and it certainly wasn't as opulent and it didn't have the depth of the other florals in the background. But I do, the mimosa note in here smells very similar to a mimosa note that I've smelled in something else. You know what, it might have been um, Herba, Herba Mimosa or the Mimosa one that the Chloe brand did. You know, they have that line where they have those ones where you can layer them and they're sort of designed to be layered. There's a Mimosa one from that line, which I had bought back in early 2019 on my way to Japan. And then I've, I've since sold it because I just wasn't reaching for it. I liked it, I really liked it a lot, but I just found that I didn't really pull for it. And I think because I felt like it wasn't complete enough and I didn't wanna to have to think about what to layer it with. But now perhaps I should have layered it with a jasmine fragrance or something or a violet fragrance because this is spectacular. It's really, really beautiful. It's very perfumey, very, I mean, you. I do imagine a very well put, together woman, um, very elegant, maybe in a beige skirt suit. I don't know, <laughs> I'm making it up, but that's, it's, it's very, it is quite feminine leaning and it is very, it has a lot of presence to it and it's gorgeous. It's sort of creamy as well, maybe slightly watery and it's got this, you know, powderiness through it. Mm. Yeah, I really, I really like that a lot. So the last one is Ooh La La. And this is the, obviously the one I bought the bottle of. It's only a 30 ml bottle at this stage. This one really blew my mind when I smelled it. So this is a beautiful iris dominant fragrance but it also has some gourmand elements to it. There is, apparently is a hazelnut in here. And I don't know if I would have picked it as hazelnut specifically, and I'm usually pretty good with hazelnut. Partic well, particularly when it's in chocolate and stuff, I can. <laughs> There's this beautiful sort of darker nutty. It is nutty, but it's almost like it's almost like having a bit of a liqueur dabbed into this. You know I'm going through an iris or oris phase at the moment. So anything iris is like I'm zooming in on it immediately. Uh, I didn't know this was an iris fragrance when I first tried it. It's a very happy fragrance for me. I don't know why. I mean, although I know oris or iris fragrances, people tend to associate that with sort of um, somber kind of or sad fragrances but to me this is very happy and I think because it has this element of gourmand to it but I wouldn't necessarily overtly call it a gourmand fragrance. It does seem to become more woody in the dry down and there is like this soft sweetness to it that doesn't feel artificial. It doesn't feel like they've just dumped a heap of vanilla or something in it. But it's not that sweet anyway, but there is a sweetness to it. This also has a more formal feel to it without being prim and proper, like a lot of other iris fragrances seem to be, or people seem to feel that a lot of iris fragrances are very uh, austere or you know um, haughty. In fact, I think a lot of fragr iris fragrances smell that way too. And this, this has an air of formality about it. I think because it's so big and because it's so, um, it's quite a powerful, strong fragrance, but you could wear it, it, you could dress it up or dress it down, I think. What I think I really love about this fragrance is when it dries down, um, the t there is a tobacco note in here and that starts to, come out and it gives it this richness. I think that's why I feel like this is a, you know, 
a very dressed up or formal kind of fragrance because it has so much presence because of this richness of the tobacco, that fuzziness. Because I think tobacco and a lot of fragrances has a fuzzy kind of element to it anyway. But then if you add it in with some iris as well, you've got that powderiness from the iris. Oh, it's just so good. Are you right there? <laughs> So I feel like if you're a fan of Iris, this is one that's definitely worth checking out. I think it's squarely unisex, so I, I don't feel like it leans feminine or masculine. Um, and even if you, you are a little bit wary of tobacco, if you, like if you like Iris fragrances, then I would still try this because I feel like the tobacco just gives it that opulence and that fuzziness. It doesn't, it doesn't make it masculine. Oh, it's so good. Now I'm rethinking my scent of the day. They're the only samples that I have so far from Teo Cabanel. Um, I just, this is a house that's really resonating with me, I think. Um, I, I'm just really loving all of their fragrances, at least on paper. I have, as I said, I haven't tried them all on skin yet. Um, but if you, and I know that they're not new. I mean, they've been around for a very, very long time. And they've also received a, you know, a moderate level of hype for the last few years, um, probably more so on Instagram than on, on YouTube. But curious to know if you've tried them and what you thought and, uh, and if you have a favorite. So I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.